Okay, we're back and uh, going to just go over a couple of things. Number one uh, is who are we? And uh, we've established that we're not our bodies and we're not our minds and our emotions and our will, which I think is our soul. And that's part of our humanity. But our persons is our spirits. And uh, that's never been refuted. It's embraced by many, many people. Uh, many psychologists, sociologists, etc. agree that we are spiritual persons. And uh, how they define that varies, I'm sure, but we're spiritual persons. And now let me uh, just change this for a moment. And these are... Uh, what I've depicted as our self-image. So these are actually the uh, images of two persons. And it's just for illustration. Uh, it certainly isn't what, what our spirits look like, but it's an illustration. And so whether you're a man or a woman, or whoever you are, uh, we are vulnerable and susceptible to those who come along. And uh, it's as Carl Rogers, a uh, renowned humanistic psychologist and philosopher, uh, has said that what people do is they set standards for us that are unattainable. We can't, we can't reach those standards. But they set them for us. Uh, and then we, we wind up despising ourselves. And they, we wind up considering ourselves unvaluable, unworthy of being loved. And that's what happens over a period of time that we just can't stand it. And so people will say, hey, boy, those are stupid eyebrows. You need to change them they need to be you know a little bit darker and uh how about some eye yeah yeah you got to stop acting that way uh you, you're really really stupid if you have this mustache uh you need to get that removed and why do you why do you say what you say who are you anyway where, where do you live oh yeah and what do you do and over and over and over again, we are slashed and distorted and, and we are depicted and told that we have to set a standard for ourselves up here. And when we can't make it, those who have told us then tell us we're idiots. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, it's happening. It is really happening. And, and it has been happening for many, many years from the very beginning, I would say. Uh, it's just, it's never enough. We are never enough as we are. We always need to be doing something. What school did you go to? What difference does it make? What did you learn? Well, I'll give you a lifetime to show it to you. Leave me alone. Leave, why don't you just let me be? Well... It's because people want to control us because they don't think much, well, several reasons, but they don't think much of themselves. And so they don't want you to think much of yourself. And uh, they, uh, they want to control you for their own manipulative desires. And uh, I don't know why other than control and power uh, and those are things that happen. The origin of problems for many people is that, according to Maslow, Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers, they despise themselves. Well, when you look at that, you say, what the hell? What is that? What, what, is, what is that? Is that? Man, I thought I was pretty cool, but look at that. And look at him. His face looks like mush. 
And so we, we develop self images that we not only don't like, in many cases we hate, and uh, that develops into uh, depression, insecurity, anxiety, a lack of hope, futility, meaninglessness, a uh, lack of accomplishment. We have guilt, shame, we feel like crap. Physical sickness, sickness addictions of all kinds, alcohol, drugs, smoking, eating. And a correct self-image, a correct self-image can bring hope and love and honor, personal power, justice, unconditional acceptance without fear, guilt, and shame. It can create a sense of direction and a vision for our lives. And it needs to. It really needs to. Because those things you see are found in the spirit of a human being, of a person, or a self. These things, hope and love and unconditional acceptance, no fear, no guilt, are found in a, in a spirit. And then comes the slash marks and what we see today of our self-image and how we evaluate our self-esteem. It's just an illustration, but you get it? Do you? Each time one of those slashes occur, did you feel it? Recognize it? There are those who have been doing it to us all of our lives. And you know, the Virginia Department of Mental Health several years ago said that depression is the impression left on a person by fear. Fear is found in a huge number of people today. And if I'm, if I'm referring to you, please don't turn off. Please listen. Fear. Fear takes away hope and love. And fear is one of the main reasons why people today are taking their lives by the thousands. Psychologists and psychiatrists agree that there, the human being has two basic needs. One is to do something that we think is worthwhile, that gives our life meaning, whatever that is for you, whatever it is. It has to be something that really gives our life meaning. And the other thing that we desperately need is unconditional love. And that can only come from our creator. If we look for it from individuals, uh, you know what a condition is? It's something that has to happen before something else can occur. It's like you have to have so many credit hours in order to get a diploma in college. You have to graduate from high school in order to go to college. And uh, you have to acquire and do and perform. And that's okay. Uh, thank goodness they have conditions for getting a driver's license. <laughs> uh, that helps. Maybe, I hope, anyway. So a condition, when somebody says, well, I love you, I love you, but... I love you if, I love you when, then those are conditions that we set sometimes for ourselves. We take the buts that they give us and we magnify them. Well, I've got to do this. Well, certainly, yeah, if I'm going to be cool and accepted into the group and be one of the in people, then I need to have those dark eyebrows and and I need to have that little mustache, or I don't need to have that little mustache, or or I need, you know, I need to be valued by, by somebody else. Well, we are valued by the one who created us. We are loved by the one cre who created us, not because we're a part of a certain cult or religion or, or faction in school, we're loved unconditionally 
there's no ifs, whims, or buts by the one who created us. And that has to be true. Uh, we can't be our minds. We change our minds change by the by the minute. We can't be our emotions. We know how unstable those things are. And, and it, we can't depend on our wills. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that in order to be acceptable. No, no. We are acceptable. And then we can do what needs to be done as people. Uh, can I make the love that I give you conditional and expect it, that you're going to be okay with that? No. Hell no. Won't happen. It, it's against who we are. It's against our spirits. Can I say that if you don't do this or if you do that, then I'm going to accept you? That's what's being said, isn't it? In every way, shape, and form you can think of, that's what's being said. If you will do this and not do that, then I'll accept you. No. No. It doesn't work. What we need to do now, coming from where we are, without you and I having to perform like the monkeys, uh, what we need to do is remove the slashes. We need to take away the slashes. And before we do that, we have to identify those slashes. What does this one mean? Well, that that was that was that girl in school who said she was going to beat me up because she didn't like the way I looked. Uh, and how about this? Well, we've got to take those off. We've got to get those slashes removed. And in order to do that, in order to get those slashes taken away and cleared up so that we can see who we really are, we need to take back the brushes. The brushes are something that we all have. We all have our own brushes. And others have come into our lives and they come up within and behind us, etc. And they say, give me back my brushes. We need to say to them, give me back my brushes. Because they've come up and they've taken them from us. Why? Because they're close to us. We, we respected them. Or they just dominated us, you know? Or we wanted to be a part of, of them and what they were a part of so badly that we gave them portions of who we are. What a bunch. What a bunch. And so over life's experiences, I've come to realize that I was affected that way very, very much so by several people and organizations and in a very, very large way by religion. So, what now? Well, we know that we are accepted and loved unconditionally. We're going to be able to stand up for ourselves and say, give me back that brush. And when we get the brush back, then we can just remove the slashes and make sure, you know, they may happen again. But we, we know now what's causing it, and we can just keep on taking back the brushes and be our beautiful selves again. That's what we want, isn't it? We want people to see that we're strong, that we have hope, that we have something to say that's meaningful, that we have something to do in this life that's going to count and matter in other people's lives. You know, or we just want to be left alone. How about that? Can we just be left alone and, and tell people to stop setting standards for us and let, let us develop our own standards in relationship to our own creator and ourselves and, and the vision that we have for ourselves? That's what we want, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to ask you now, to take some time and go ahead, get a, get a pad and a piece of paper and write out the names of the people who you believe 
have taken your brushes and have distorted your self-image. Don't, don't let anybody see this piece of paper. Hide it. Do whatever you need to do. It's yours. And then I want you to start saying to those people, you want to do it face to face, that's great. But you can say to them, give me back my brushes. And then come back again for the next section and uh, we'll talk more about what you do with that, with those brushes at that point. Okay? Please, don't give up. Don't let go. You are absolutely worth every bit of struggle that it might take for you to be you because you are important. No, not because you do anything, just because you are. Okay? Okay. Thanks. Bye.